Oh yeah. Recording, recording. Hello 3D printer gurus, what's going on? Welcome back to the Reality Check video. We're gonna be going over OctoPi and how to get it set up on your Raspberry Pi uh, for pretty much any 3D printer that exists that you want to use this with. Of course, you have to use a certain slicer for this to work, 15.04 Kira, as far as right now. Anyway, this is a great addition to pretty much any 3D printer in the market if you want to have a wireless printer in the sense that you can actually go from your slicer on your computer, directly import them to your Octopi, and then print without having to take the memory card out each and every time. It, it just is, it's a huge benefit for me as far as saving time, and I just really, really like to use it when I'm doing a lot of different uh, prototypes, so I can just very quickly do that workflow. Without having to get up and do those different things, I can just kind of, you know, watch it. So anyway, what I want to show you right now is, is how to get that set up as quickly as possible. There are a lot of great resources on the internet of people showing you how to do that, but uh, this video, I hope, it serves its own purpose. So. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump into things really quickly. Um, just in case you're wondering, I like to make, of course, a lot of 3D printer videos. I do a lot of virtual reality videos. I also focus on drones and mainly tutorials and unboxing. So this is what this is going to be right here. This is going to be our Octopi OctoPrint tutorial. As you can see right here on the screen, we've got a 3D printed object going right now. We can see a webcam. Uh, we can see actually the Raspberry Pi cam version of it showing up right there. And you can see it's building a base. Uh, it's printing pretty fast there on the Anet A8. From here, I can actually switch over and see the temperature of it, and you know, I can see the G-code viewer if I wanted to. Uh, it'll actually it, it'll load up here. It takes a little while for that to load. Also, you got terminal view, so all these different things, plus the best part that I like the most is that it auto time lapses. So every time I'm done with the print, I have a video of those prints, and I can actually go through here and see all those different videos that it automatically keeps, you know, keeps each and every time. So um, there's a great benefit to having OctoPi on your printer. And I also get to name, you know, my printer has got pre Pro VR gear prints named up there, and it shows the connection and everything. Um, right now, I'm actually printing a baby Groot with it, so that uh, I can give those away to friends and family. Uh, also, I, I can click over here on this other one. You can see that I've actually got another printer printing here as well, and I can click over here, and it will... Oh, there it goes. You can see that it was loading. This camera is a little bit higher quality, and it's, uh, it's, it's definitely... Uh, a little hot right now, so I, uh, that's that one going, that's the CR10 working its way. Uh, okay, so let's see how we can get this going. We want to see how we can get this going on your printer, so let's see what we need to do first. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to either an uh, electronic store or somewhere online to buy yourself a Raspberry Pi. I got mine on Amazon for about $35. This is the Raspberry Pi version 3, and what's nice about it is it has wireless built into it plus Bluetooth built in. That's just super, super nice. It's got the Ethernet spot as well as USB cables, an HDMI, audio, and the power receiver, which is what you use for your normal standard like Android cell phone cable. You know, to charge it, you just plug that guy right in there and boom, you've got power. So what I use on my printers is I use the 12 volt to 5 volt adapter, and from that I can just plug in the power to the actual power board. Um, to the power supply and then from there I of course just plug it right in and, and it works So it, it's a nice easy way to add it on to pretty much any 3d printer anyways You're gonna need yourself a Raspberry Pi secondly I've got some heat sinks that I put on the Raspberry Pi these heat sinks can be purchased for very very cheap And of course they just help the longevity they help keep the pie alive and you want to keep your pie alive Lastly, you want to go ahead and get yourself a memory card because the Pi needs to run off of a memory card. You've got to have something on there, some storage, so that it can actually flash your whatever you're going to be using on it, in this case, OctoPi, and then it'll boot up with that memory card. So you're going to need to get one of those. I've got a 32 gigabyte here. It's plenty of space for my purposes on a 3D printer. Um, you can go ahead and get bigger, but I wouldn't recommend getting too, too much bigger. You're just going to waste your money because it's going to be a long time before you fill up all that space. Uh, okay, it depends on what you're doing, I guess. Anyway, so what you're going to want to do next is after you've got your Octo or after you've got your Raspberry Pi and your memory card, you're going to want to go ahead and go to octopi.com and download Octopi version 0.13 or whatever the newest version is at the time. Okay, so when I download mine, I get an Octopi Jesse Lite. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. It's an image file. Next, I'm going to put my memory card in the computer. Okay, and after that, we're actually going to download a program called Win32 Disk Imager. I'm going to put that in the description below so you can see it very easily. It's a very small, simple program that basically just takes any image file and puts it onto a memory card. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab that image file by clicking right here and, of course, bringing that over, grabbing that image file that we just downloaded, clicking Open, and then, of course, we make sure the device, make sure the device that you are saving it on is the correct one. Do not make the mistake of overwriting your entire hard drive, like I did one time doing this. Make sure the device is the right one. You can be sure to check the device by going into your folder options and just making sure in your computer that that is the same number, or I'm sorry, the same letter 
that it's supposed to be. Mine is the R, so it's supposed to be R, and then I will hit write. It'll say, writing on a physical device can corrupt the device. Is that okay? Yep. If it says that, and it's supposed to be that one, then go ahead and hit yes. Okay, and while that's happening, you're going to want to go ahead and download that program I also have in the description called Putty. It's going to be used here in just a moment. H2E. Oh boy. This takes forever. Okay, and while you're waiting for this part to finish, make sure you just pull out whatever your toy drone you have and just get it started, okay? Bring it on! Yeah. Oh yeah! Okay. Okay, finally it's done, and it says on there format disk. I no, cancel. We don't want to format the disk. Okay. Hit X. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to actually open that memory card. So go into your computer and find that drive. It's boot R. Once I'm in here, I'm going to see that there's two files that I can actually concern myself with. There is Octopi and Octopi Network. First we're gonna go into Octopi Network. The easiest way to do this without downloading any extra programs, if you're on Windows, of course, is to right-click it, hit Open With, and go to WordPad. Opening it with WordPad allows you to see it in a nicer format than what it does if you open it in Notepad, which is really hard to read. So, now that we're here in WordPad, we're going to do just one quick thing. There's many options that you can deal with here. I'm just going to quickly focus on one, and that what that is, is it's how to get your Octopi connected to your wireless internet without having to plug in the Ethernet cable. So, if you want your Octopi to very quickly, or I'm sorry, your, just your Raspberry Pi to boot up with Octopi on the wireless internet, all you have to do is go up here to where it says WPA, WPA2, secured, or by chance if yours is a WEP or just a completely open, then this, this is what you'll use if you have no passwords. I have a password protected internet, so what I'll do is I'll go up here, and I'm going to take each one of these where it says iFace, WLAN, WPA and WPSK. I'm going to go ahead and delete each of these hashtags that are right in front of each one. Why? Because it says uncomment the lines prefix with the single hashtag of the configuration. So we uncommented them just as it says to do. It says put your SSID here. This is the name of your network. My network name is Reality Check VR. How about that, huh? And then it says to put your password here. My network password is and all you have to do is just save the file when you're done with that and it's saved. It's good, okay? Close out of it. You can open up just Octopi and that file configuration just by itself allows you to edit the camera settings. We're gonna do this later while we're into the Octopi through Putty. So I'm not gonna worry about this right now. It's not my concern. I'm just gonna go ahead and exit out of that. I'm going to remove this memory card from my computer. And now I will take the memory card and I will put it into the Raspberry Pi. So here we go on the back of the Raspberry Pi. You'll just slip the memory card right in. All right, got it, got it in there. I've got just a normal cell phone charge cable. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy into the Raspberry Pi. You can see a red light will turn on instantly. And then of course, when you start to see the green light blinking, the green light is what tells you the wireless internet is working or at least trying to work and communicate. So when the green light starts blinking, good things are happening. At this point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download something called Angry IP Scanner, or you can simply just go online and search your own router for the wireless settings and look for a client list. If you look at your client list, it'll tell you everything that's logged into your wireless router. Also, if you have Angry IP Scanner, it'll just check all of your IPs and it'll tell you what things are on your network. So uh, I'll go ahead and run IP Scanner here. Angry IP Scanner, I'll tell it to start. Hey, and there it is. You can see I've got these other ones already named ANET A8 Local and CR10 Local. This one is named Octopi because it's the new one that we just put on there. So this is how we know what address to look up when we see 192.168.0.11. In your case, it's going to be something different, so go ahead and be sure to check that. And when I go ahead and minimize this, now we're going to go ahead and open up that program PuTTY. In PuTTY, I'm going to go ahead and put in that code 192.168.0.11 and hit enter. 
It's going to say, warning, potential security breach, but we know what we're doing. It's us. We're jumping into our Linux, so we know. It's fine. Yes. It's going to tell us to log in as what? We're going to log in as the Pi. P-I. It's going to say, what's the password? And the uh, original default password is Raspberry. So R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And then it says, hey, welcome. Welcome in. And, and now that we're in, we can, we can do what we want to do. So... Uh, the first thing I want to do is, is change some configurations, right? So we're going to type in sudo, because sudo is what you type in when you want to, uh, you know, have administrator rights, basically. Then we're going to go ahead and put space. We're going to put raspi, R-A-S-P-I, then add a little, uh, add a little dash. Then we'll go ahead and put config. After that, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And if it doesn't work, make sure you don't have any capitalizations in there. It generally doesn't like that. Um, so here we go. The first thing you can do is, 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 if you notice when you check up your Raspberry Pi, is that it's not using very much of the space. So you need to expand the file system. So just by simply hitting 1 and then hitting Enter. So now what that means is it's going to actually give you the full 32 gigabytes of your card, or if it's 64 or 64 or bigger than that, it'll give you the full capacity of your card to be used in Octopi. And that's very beneficial for when you're saving different G codes and, and you want to have a whole database of G codes that you can just print at will. So anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Next time it reboots, it'll be expanded. Great. Change user password. Yeah, I, I would like to change the password. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter on here. It says you will now ask to be entered a new password for the Pi. OK. Right here, a lot of people get confused. When they start typing, they're like, it's not working. It actually, it, it purposefully doesn't put anything on the screen because they don't want your password to pop up on the screen. So you can choose whatever password you want. Just be careful with what you're typing and remember it. So I'm going to type in my password that I want and hit enter and then I'm going to type in that password again which is actually about eight characters or more hit enter and there password changed successfully if you somehow hit the wrong key it's going to tell you there's an error and that's why um, so that that worked right there now when we log in next time it's still going to log in with pi pi but then when it asks me for my password it's no longer going to be raspberry it's going to be whatever I just chose right there okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit boot option no we're not going to boot options I'm going to go not even to enable camera. The camera actually automatically should be working. You should not have to hit enable camera. It should already be working. I'm um, going over here, add to rest, track, advanced options. You can't overclock the, the Pi 3 with Octoprint, so don't even try to overclock it. You can't do it. Uh, you can go to advanced options and click advanced options. All right, and here we've got the different choices uh, that you can see. What we want to do is we want to go to the host name because we want to actually name this Octopi. That way when we see it on our network, we know what it is. I like to name this host name whatever printer you're going to have it on. So I'm going to click on host name. It's going to tell you, note, you can't use certain things. Don't worry, I'm not going to. The name right now is Octopi. So I'm going to delete that. And this one is going to be going on, oh, what kind of printer is it? It's going to be going on an Anycubic. So I'm going to call this one the Anycubic, right? Because that's the Anycubic. So perfect, Anycubic. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. So now what we need to do is we're going to scroll down here to finish and go to fin oh, sorry. finish, hit enter. It's going to say, would you like to reboot? And yes, we're going to reboot it. So at this point, it's rebooting itself, right? So we, are, we already know that the IP address for this one is uh, what it said it was earlier. So if I type that IP address into our, just our uh, a browser, it should actually bring up Octopi. And from there, we can get started on it. Okay, let's make sure. I'm going to click on 192.168.0.11. Hit enter. Let's see what happens. Aha! Octoprint. Awesome. So the very first thing you can see that, that it wants me to do is it, it asks me to give configuration access control. What that, what that means is, is do you want to have a username and password that you put in every time you access your, your Octopi? And if you're going to be using it from the internet, yes, you computer and accessing your printer without your knowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and add a username on here. Reality check VR. Password. Nice. Doesn't show you what my password's going to be. So I can put my password in there. Hit to keep access control enabled. Uh, yeah, that's just, just the way it should be, right? So at this point, you're going to have the option to give it, uh, you know, log, well, have to log in first, right? So let's log in. All right, now we're logged in. Cool. And it's going to tell you to update it, but I'm not going to update it just yet because that takes a few minutes and, and, and I can update it here in a moment. Uh, yes, do update it when you get here, um, but we're going to avoid that just for a moment so I can show you some quick things. 
Uh, basically, what you're going to want to do is you can just very quickly, if, you're connect, if your printer is already connected to the Octopi, you can just click Auto Connect on Server Startup, click Connect, and, and attempt it to work right there. If you don't get it working, you know you might want to click on Serial Port. It'll show you the only option that you have for putting it into USB. Click that. Your baud rate, if you know what it is, go ahead and tell it what it is. So if you know what your baud rate is, go ahead and use that. If you don't, go ahead and use Auto. Uh, check Connect. It should be pretty easy to connect to your printer. I really haven't had any issues getting my printers connected at this step. And when it comes to actually using this program, you're basically just going to be taking G-Code and dragging it and dropping it on here. Or because it has profiles built into it, you can also very simply just drag OBJs or STL files directly onto it. And it can print those because it's got that profile built into it that you choose. Uh, also down here we've got an upload button if you don't want to drag and drop them onto the screen you can click upload it will allow you to do it that way. Down here is where you can check to make sure you're using your full SD card. Right here it says 26.8 uh, out of 29 gigabytes. Cool we're using my full card that's what we wanted to make sure we were doing. Uh, lastly we can go up here to the top where it says uh, settings. In your settings you've got all these different awesome choices you're going to want to make sure to go through each of these when you pick your printer um, and, and of course just make sure all the settings are what you want them to be in your webcam you can go in here and you can do any of the things you need to do as far as bit rate flipping things uh, they do have a few more controls on the updated version of that as well you can add other users to your octopi if you need to it's got an api just all, all these wonderful things be sure to check out these different pieces uh, also, it does use Cura Engine 15.04, so that is what I also slice my objects in because I'm going to be putting them into this um, you know, printer of Octopi. I think that just seems to be the best one. I haven't had any problems with my prints at all. So, All right, lastly, I'm going to click Cancel to get out of that. When you click Control, if you have a webcam plugged in, it will automatically pop up right here. You can see this thing pops up with a little image there because there is no webcam plugged into this printer right now. If I go over here and I type in 192.168.12, you'll see that you know this printer does have a webcam built, you know plugged into it so it instantly shows that and it takes a while this this octopi is very very hot right now so it's taking it some time to actually show up so i'm going to go ahead and go to my other one just because i know it pops up a lot faster go into control and hey you can see the the video right there so that's how the video works so before we go too much more into this i want to quickly go over the video settings because it's not that complicated but it is something that's that's uh that's necessary um, if you notice that your video quality is not up to par, if it's only 10 frames a second and really, really small and crappy quality, right? And you want to make it nicer quality. Okay, here's how you're going to do that. You're going to go back into PuTTY. I'm actually going to close this one. I'm going to open up a new PuTTY. 192.168.0.11, right? And then we're going to open it up. It's going to say, what do you want to log in as? We're going to log in as Pi. What's your password? Log in with the new password that we created a moment ago. It's going to say, hey, Pi, any cubic. That's us. And then from there, I can uh, go ahead and go into something different. Before we go into sudo, before we do any of that stuff, we want to change the directory that we're in. We're, we're, right now, we're in just the basic directory. We want, we want to go to a specific place. So we're going to hit change directory, cd, hit space, slash. Party up moods, Nancy Vela set round on Tuesday. Root slash bin. There we go. Yeah, so now that we're in root slash bin. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to type in sudo nano space. And then uh, last thing is going to be the actual file that we want to open, which is called webcam D. And then we hit enter. It's going to open up that file. So uh, just if you need to go back and watch exactly what we did there, that's going to open up this specific file that we want that's already on the Raspberry Cam. And, and from here, we can see, okay. We've got these different camera options. The camera is auto for the, you know, the USB or the Raspi Cam. We want the USB options <laughs> to be larger than what they are. These 640 by, you know, by 480 is a really, really tiny image screen. If you do very large, like 1920 by 1080, you know, high def or whatever, it's going to give you significant lag and reduction in, uh, in your viewing time versus you know, the real time. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to that. So for my purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and put 1280. Oops, used the wrong board there. I'm gonna go ahead and put 1280 by 720. Still high definition, not quite as high. All right, and now for frames per second, I'm gonna put rather than 30, I'm gonna try 25 frames per second. And then over here, I'm gonna change this to 25 frames per second. I, I, I always do that. I don't know if that's what you need to do. All right, at this point, so I've got 1280 by 720, 25 frames a second. Uh, if you're having problems, you might need to make it even less. You might need to keep it 10 frames per second, depending on you know what camera you have or what you're using. But uh, for this purposes, I've tested it and it works great right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control 
because that what's down in the bottom when you see that little button that means control so control o to overwrite it and i'm going to go ahead and hit enter to make sure it stays that same file now i'm going to hit control x to leave and at that point we're done so uh, all we need to do is just go ahead and click the x over here close it and uh, as we're back over here all we would do is reboot the system and rebooting the system by clicking on this you can hit reboot hit proceed it's going to then give you the proper camera settings. So now you've got the Octopi ready to go with the proper camera settings, right? Right, awesome. So it takes usually about a minute or two to reconnect once you've rebooted it. And then once you do that, you've got more settings where you can actually rename it. You can go in there and you can add uh, all kinds of different things like the color settings that you wanna do. But it's just, it's a really cool program. And, and the only other thing that you can really do on top of this to make your printing life easier and even better than that is of course, we do have this program called Printoid for us. And, and this is made by an awesome guy. Uh, he does a lot of really cool work for 3D printers uh, and just the, the whole you know community in general. So I uh, really appreciate the hard work that he's done. I did buy the premium version of Printoid. So I've got Printoid on my phone. Uh, I can access you know these printers on the go just by simply going into my settings right here. I click on Printoid and, and from here, it's gonna open up the profiles. I can, you know, I haven't set up this communication, but I can actually choose between all my printers. I can view the webcam. I can view all of their print times. It makes it really nice, especially for somebody who, you know, I can't always be here watching them, but I need to always have access to them in case something's going on. So anyways, that is basically how you get your uh, printer set up. I know I've done a lot of talking this whole video. I do hope you guys found some benefit from listening. And uh, if you guys have any questions specifically about this, definitely uh, ask me. I will be uh, help trying to help out as much as possible in the comments. I know other people are really, really good and helpful in the comments too. So sometimes I don't jump in because other people have already done it for me. I really appreciate that as well, guys. So uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to ask them. Um, also I, I do uh, work a normal job every single day I come home and I try to get this stuff done on the side and, and it's all kind of extra stuff so I definitely do appreciate the support simply just by watching the videos or, or of course any, any positive comments I do have Patreon but any, anybody that can support in any way I do always appreciate that uh, you, you guys mean a lot so thank you very much for watching I'll see you guys in the next video bye